1 John chapter 1 and it, it says there in verse 1 that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life and the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son Jesus Christ and these things we write to you that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sins. If we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us. May God bless the, the reading of his word this morning. And when John writes his letter, again he, he's more in his, his older age here. And he writes that this first letter of John, he's writing to the Christians, he's not writing to the world. See, we have a message for the world, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Believe, repent, and be saved. Believe on Jesus Christ for salvation and the cleansing of sin. But John, he's writing to the church. And a key verse in 1, in 1 John, in this, in this letter, is from 1 John 5, verse 19, which kind of helps us to grasp more of what John's saying and 5 verse 19 says and we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in the wicked one as some translations say lies in wickedness see John in his letter makes this distinction between the world and the Christians between the world and and the church that there there is a difference and you know according to the word of God the whole world lies under the dominion under the rule under the grip of Satan under the control of evil and we see that in some structures of, of government like in communism we, we see it in, in structures like in, in the mafia or in the triad gangs, where, where there's this, you know, the, where you get this prominent sense of murder and, and destruction. And so the structures were within this world, the evil one is, if you like, over them. And he will even try and corrupt the church that we're a part of. And according to the word of God, the whole world lies under the dominion of the evil one. No matter how much the world will change and can even look good, it's still under the grip of sin and evil. And at times in history, things would look like they're improving, that they're getting better, and then something twists, something just turns a couple degrees and the evil rises its head and this is all because the world is under the control of the evil one and we can't change that since Adam sinned he gave over dominion and rule of the earth to Satan hence the world is placed 
and is reclining, if you like, into evil. And this will only change when Jesus comes back and makes a new earth and a new heaven at some point in the future. It's for you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So okay, it's fine. For now, this world is in wickedness, is in evil. Hence, John and the Apostle Paul, they make it clear the Christian needs to know they are different from the world. How many of us know we are different? We know Jesus. We don't fit into this system, if you like, of the world. And Paul said, I know whom I have believed in. Or he refers to the Son of God who loves him and gives his life for him. See, Christ lives in me, according to Galatians 2.20. We are in Christ. You see, we've been taken out of darkness, out of the world, and placed into Christ. And this is something that we need to know. Christians are those who've been rescued from sin and the devil. And they learn who they are. Every day I'm learning who I am in Christ. I'm learning what he has done for me. Because through the gospel, we have come from the darkness into the light. Our thinking has changed. The desires of our hearts have changed. And verse 3, it says here, Have fellowship with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We have fellowship with the Father and Jesus, not with the evil world. Fellowship means here, things that are held in common. You hold things in common with God the Father and with God the Son because He has rescued you. Fellowship here, it can mean a partnership. It can mean a community. You come into a new community in Christ. Fellowship does not imply, sorry, fellowship does imply Standing together on common ground. Standing together on common ground. How amazing. God the Father's desire, Jesus Christ's desire, is to have a close personal relationship with each and every one of us. Where you and God stand together on I say common ground, holy ground. For you've been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. And you know His great love, His great redemption. But some people say, don't they? Ah, bah, humbug. That's impossible. It's impossible. But the Apostle John does not think so. See, he knows it. He knows it. So having fellowship, partnership, harmony with the Father and with the Son, it should be the norm. It's like sometimes, you should be, sometimes, you know, when you're first in the faith and you're following Jesus, you can't wait for the next day. Because you know you're going to be walking with Christ, walking with God the Father. You're going to be in harmony, in fellowship with Him and in verse it talks about joy and John writes this letter so that your joy may be full now if we're walking in harmony with God the Father and God the Son and they're walking with us and we're walking with them there should be this joy in the Lord and joy is grace recognised joy is favour recognised <laughs> Knowing how much God and His Son love us. You have that awareness of the Father and the Son. You're conscious, conscious of that. You know the Word and it brings a joy. Throughout Scripture, we see God's people have joy. 
and, uh, and to be balanced uh, and, and to be fair, we do also see that at times in Scripture there is a time to weep, a time to grieve, a time to lament. But as well, and we mustn't neglect it, there is a time for joy, a time to celebrate. And John writes here how we can have joy in a world that is governed by the wicked one, the evil one. There is only one thing that separates us from God the Father, and that is sin. Hence, we need to admit and own up to our sin before we can have joy. If we realized how much sin robs us of joy, we wouldn't enter into that sin. And sometimes I have to think when I am te- when I'm being tempted, I have to think to myself, if I fall into this temptation, it will rob me of joy. The temptation may last for a few moments, but you overcome and you walk in that joy of the Lord. But to admit that we fall and we, we fall into sin, that's a, that's a big thing. We, when we have to admit our, our wrongs to God, and, and if we can even make confession to one another, that's, that's hard, that's, that's difficult. But as we do that, so the joy comes, the work of God's Spirit comes. And verse 8 says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and the word is not in us. Sin blocks us, cuts us off from God. And Jesus, and and, and the joy of being in fellowship with that. You know, John's almost saying, you know, (laughs) shut the door, keep the sin out there in the world. Don't let the sin come into the church. But where you have sin, put it right with God. When a Christian has one foot in the world and one foot in the faith, they become the most miserable. They become so depressed because the world's under the evil one and the church is under Christ and the two don't mix. Hence, verse 9 is the way back to the Father. If we confess our sins, He is faithful. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we are walking in the light of Christ, we will not hide from His light. And we will allow the Holy Spirit to reveal what is in darkness and we will confess it to God. If I refuse to confess my sin, I'm avoiding the light. I'm avoiding, if you like, the searchlight of the Holy Spirit. It means I am refusing to face something. That is in my nature and in my character that will break fellowship with God because God is light and in Him is no darkness. If I refuse to confess my sin to God, I am resisting the Holy Spirit to bring hidden sins into the light and to lead me to forsake God. Refusing to confess also means I'm refusing to be honest with myself. And one of the things God works into our spirit, into our soul as Christians, is absolute honesty. To be absolutely honest with God, with ourselves, and with one another. And that brings freedom. The person who is dishonest, cuts himself off automatically from God and from Christian fellowship. Shakespeare put it like this, then he is false to everyone, but if you are true, you cannot be false to anyone. If you are true, you cannot be false to anyone. Confession is essential, and we must remain open to the work and the light of Christ. 
And I'm, I'm just at the beginning of the year, I just say, Lord, I want to get closer to you, you know, and I just pray. And I left my quiet time. And next thing, God convicts me of a sin. Then I go, oh, all right, God, that one's not too bad. And I, I just confess it to the Lord. And I'm, yeah, Jesus and I, we have a good time of fellowship. And the next day, I have my quiet. And the same happens again. But this time, it was a sin that made me feel uncomfortable. And I'm like, oh, God, that's nasty. That's not fair. I mean, that happened years and years ago, and they deserved it. <laughs> and you, you know where it goes in your head? You just start arguing. And that. And, and God said, yeah. but it's not right, is it? Uh, so in the end, you give in. And you say, okay, God. And you confess it. And you give it to the Lord. And what you don't realize is, it's like, You've been carrying an empty void on your back and you don't know it's there until it is removed and it's gone and then you go free. So I thought, oh great, that's gone, I'm forgiven, I'm fellowship with the Lord. <coughs> Next day, walking along, the Lord does something again. He highlights another area of sin and I'm like, Lord, I'm the pastor of the church. I read the Bible every day. And he, and he, he just, I won't tell you what it is, but, <laughs> but again, just highlighted it. And I'm like, God, this isn't right, this is nasty, this isn't fair, it's not making me feel very good, and I want to feel good. <sighs> Confess it. I have to admit, bow the knee, submit, give it to the Lord. Joy comes. Peace comes. Peace of mind comes. And you, we have, as Christians, we, we walk in the light of Christ. And we need his light to air, highlight areas that are blind sides that we cannot see. And as we confess them and we get them right, our fellowship goes deeper, our joy goes deeper, and I'm still a work in progress. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff there the Lord still needs to reveal as he sanctifies me. But it's this journey we walk on with the Lord and when he highlights something, it, it can feel like at times that mountain of dirty washing that we keep up on the landing and we don't want no one to go upstairs and see it. it it's a little bit like that. And when we sincerely and honestly make confession, God is faithful. It is a promise from God. He is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us. And we name our sins one by one to Him. When God begins to lead you in confession and repentance, you can be guaranteed, guaranteed, of a deeper work of the Spirit of God in your heart because God is holy and he is making you holy as you confess and confession and forgiveness they go together they go hand in hand and God makes us clean verse 9 that means in the Greek made ceremonially clean made spiritually clean the intermingling of filth the intermingling of sin is removed and we are cleansed, verse 7, by the blood of Jesus Christ from all sin. God's Son cleanses us from all sin. The contaminated mixture of sin in us is removed so that we can be pure and holy. We can be blameless. And guess what? The pure in heart see God. We get glimpses into the glory of and the majesty and splendor of God because we're made pure. And Isaiah saw the Lord in his glory. One day we will see the same. But it becomes reality to us in the Spirit. And the church can only truly be in harmony with God if sins are confessed and cleansed by the powerful living blood of Jesus. 
Jesus gives his life for us so we can be restored back to God the Father in heaven and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. No wonder the Christian man or woman of God has joy, has fellowship. Don't let sin rob you of joy in Jesus Christ. Don't let it rob you of the fellowship, the partnership, the harmony that we have. It's the greatest gift. In an evil world that is sinful, in a world that is anti-Christ, and anti-God. Don't let it rob you of walking with Christ. Look at the Bible characters, see their struggles, see their issues, and how they wrestled, and in their wrestling with their different issues, they came closer to the Lord. And for some of them it broke them. But the reality of the knowing of in whom I have believed became all the more stronger, all the more prominent. See, no wonder Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. I may accept Christ into my life, and all my friends may leave me. I may accept Christ into my life, and what I have stolen, I have to give it back. I may accept Christ into my life. And all the lies and the deceit that came out of my mouth, I have to stop that and begin to walk in truth. There is a divine work of grace that transforms our lives so we can become spirit-empowered in Christ and move forward for Him. The world hates it. Because they hate an encounter with a holy man of God or a holy woman of of Christ, of God, who's been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. But we rejoice. We give glory to the God on high because we have fellowship with Him and we know Him. We know what we have been rescued from. We know his saving and changing work and we know there's so much more in the future and ahead of us as we walk with him. Is there joy in in your heart this morning because of what Christ Jesus has done for, for, for you? A lot of people think God is a killjoy. He's the complete opposite. He wants to give joy so that our cup runs over and we walk in this world with all this stuff and evil and what have you around us but because we know God has a better plan he's going to make all things perfect and new and he's invited people like us into that plan into a walk with him that the world does not understand because it's blinded is under the the hold of the evil one. But we are set apart for a purpose and a destiny to glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen.